Hello and welcome to the Legal Aid Society's instructional video about alternatives to foreclosure. In this video, you'll learn some of the potential options to avoid foreclosures. At the outset, it's important to understand it will nearly always be in your best interest to avoid having your home foreclosed upon. You may be able to avoid foreclosure depending on several factors, including your financial state and whether or not you want to keep or leave your home. So let's get started. First, it's important to honestly assess your current financial situation. Sometimes borrowers miss payments because of temporary changes in income that will readjust in the near future. Temporary changes may include a loss of a job, reduction in hours, or a temporary illness or disability. However, permanent changes in income may mean that you simply cannot afford your home. Permanent changes include divorce, permanent disability, or the death of a breadwinner. In either case, make sure that you make an honest appraisal of what you can and cannot afford. Next, consider whether you want to keep your home or leave your home while keeping in mind your financial state. This will directly impact what foreclosure alternatives are available to you. There are several options for those borrowers willing to leave their home. First, the homeowner may sell his home. In a sale, the homeowner uses the proceeds from that sale to pay off the loan. This option works best when homeowners owe less than the sale price of the home. The homeowner may also seek a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Here, the homeowner gives the lender the deed to the home in exchange for forgiveness of the debt. This works best when the borrower owes about what the house is worth and when there are no junior liens on the home. You should be advised that in a deed in lieu of foreclosure transaction, if you have equity in your home, you will lose that equity. However, you will also avoid the expense of foreclosure and the negative impact that a foreclosure has on your credit score. The homeowner can also engage in what's called a short sale. Here, the homeowner sells the home for less than he or she owes and the bank agrees to forgive the difference. The bank will then agree to release the rest of the debt. This way, the lender makes some of its money back and the borrower is free from future payment obligations. Cash for keys is not an alternative to foreclosure, but may be available to the borrower following a foreclosure sale. Here, the lender promises to give the borrower money in exchange for leaving the home in a good condition. This works best when the home has just been sold at the master commissioner's sale and the lender wants to avoid the expenses of an eviction by the sheriff. To recap, borrowers who want to leave the home can pursue several options. These include a sale of the home, a deed in lieu of foreclosure, a short sale, or a cash for keys exchange. Some borrowers may want to keep their home. Again, it's important to critically evaluate whether you can afford to keep your home. If you do want to keep your home, it is a priority that you begin setting money aside as soon as possible during the foreclosure process. Several options are available to homeowners who wish to keep their home. First, the borrower can enter into a forbearance agreement with their bank. Here, the bank would allow the borrower to temporarily suspend or reduce payments. The terms of the loan remain the same, but the borrower has time to pay back the overdue interest. This works best when the borrower cannot currently afford her monthly payments, but expects to be able to afford them in the near future. The disadvantage is that the bank only gives you a short period of time before regular monthly payments must be made. Usually this time is three to six months. The borrower can also seek a loan modification. Here, the homeowner and lender renegotiate the terms of the loan, such as interest rate, the loan term, or the principal balance. This works best when the borrower has a high or adjustable interest rate and the homeowner could afford to pay a somewhat reduced amount each month. This option is preferable for many borrowers since any aspect of the loan can be renegotiated. Homeowners may consider filing for Chapter 13 bankruptcy protection. This involves a reorganization of all of the homeowner's debts. This works best when the borrower has regular income and can afford monthly payments outside bankruptcy and additional payments within bankruptcy. The borrower must make sure that he or she can make the payments when they are due. Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection may also be an option. Here the borrower files for bankruptcy protection and the lender agrees to reaffirm the debt outside of bankruptcy. The homeowner may also seek what's called a reinstatement. Here the homeowner agrees to pay back all of the missed payments plus applicable late fees, legal fees, and court costs. This works best when the homeowner missed payments but can afford her full monthly payments and can pay fees associated with the reinstatement. This can be an expensive option and most people in foreclosure don't have thousands of dollars available to them to reinstate their loan. Finally, the borrower can attempt to refinance their loan. In this option, the homeowner agrees to find another lender to borrow money from in order to repay the original lender. 
This works well when the borrower has good equity in the house and has regular income and a good credit score. To review, those borrowers who wish to keep their home may be able to seek a forbearance agreement, loan modification, Chapter 13 bankruptcy protection, Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection, a reinstatement, or a refinancing plan. There are many resources available to you in the community to help you pursue one of these alternatives to foreclosure. This concludes this segment of the Legal Aid Society's foreclosure video series. For more information, please contact your local Legal Aid office.